One of the things my dad always used to tell me was, Neil, use the right tool for the job. And the exact same thing applies to MATLAB's PDE Solver. Now, it's a great tool for visualizing data and solving partial differential equations. However, that does not mean that it's the be-all, end-all tool for any equation that you encounter. So, today we're going to do two things. One, understand when are you supposed to use it, and also, two, how should you use it, and how do you implement it in MATLAB, like the actual coding process and the syntax that MATLAB uses. It seems like the logical first step is when should you use it. Uh, PDEPE -E stands for Partial Differential Equation Parabolic Elliptic. Um, all that means is that you're going to be using it, and you only can use it if your system is varying in both time and space. Okay? So, if your system is varying with time, then you do not have a steady state, and if it's varying in a, in like a spatial dimension, um, you care about uh, like a temperature profile as you move into the system. Now, if you're if you care about temperature profiles in two spatial dimensions, like in x and y, or r and theta. Um, uh, this solver is not going to work for you, okay? You're going to have to use something else. All right, so first thing first, you have to have a system that varies in both time and space, okay? There are two things you need before you proceed, and you have to know at least, you have to know one initial condition, and you have to know your boundary conditions. So you're going to have one initial condition for your system and two boundary conditions. The way the MATLAB is set up uh, is that its PDEPE -E solver has six sub-functions. As I go through this tutorial, I'll do my best to try to keep any coding language uh, written in green, so just so you can, so you can keep that clear. Now the first sub-function is M and this is just used to describe the geometry of your system. So, if it's cylindrical, if it's spherical, if it's a slab, uh, PDE fun, uh, that's not actually s s saying that PDE is supposed to be fun, but that it's a PDE function, like a PDE sub-function. And this is just where we're going to stick our partial differential equation parameters. Likewise, I see fun. You can probably guess those are our initial conditions. Uh, BC fun boundary conditions. X mesh. Now this is where we have to uh, go back to our system and figure out what what distance do we care about? What distance are we looking at? And T span, that's the time span. Uh, over what period of time do we want to see like a change in temperature, uh, change in concentration, et cetera, et cetera. It'll be easiest to give you an example uh, as we walk through this process. You can understand the reasoning behind some of the MATLAB syntax. Okay, so for this example, we have an orange and the orange starts out at 5 degrees Celsius, and its outside environment is negative 5 degrees Celsius. And we want to know uh, what will the temperature pro profile look like over a span of 8 hours. Okay, So a couple of things we know. We know that there's some sort of convection happening at the surface of the orange. And at the center of the orange, uh, we know that the temperature flux is equal to zero. Okay. Now I'm not going to go over how I derive this equation. Um, I could say that for another video, but in essence, it's, it simplifies down to this. We know that there's a change in temperature over time, um, and the temperature is changing with respect to the radius. So our partial differential equation 
looks something like this. Uh, just, just squeeze that in there. Okay. Uh, we have an initial condition that at t equals zero, the temperature throughout the entire orange is five degrees Celsius, and our two boundary conditions. Uh, the first one is that at r equals zero, uh, our temperature flux is also equal to zero, and at the surface of the orange, so at r equals point oh five meters, we have a convection convection boundary. So we go ahead and use our h over k t minus t infinity. All right. And everything that I'm going to talk about in the coming slides is going to be applicable to any system that can simplify down to one spatial variable and is changing with respect to time. Okay? Even if there's heat generation in your system, you'll still be able to uh, use this method. All right, we have our partial differential equation for our system. Now, we can't just go ahead and stick that equation in the MATLAB because it'll have no idea what we're giving it. MATLAB has this, this certain format that it wants to see the partial differential equation in, and our job is to kind of squeeze that partial differential equation into this format. Now, uh, this whole term on this side, this f, x, t, d, u, d, x, this really complicated thing, typically, for most of the systems that uh, we'll be analyzing in class, it's just going to be d, u, d, x. Okay? Um, there's two terms that you may not be familiar with, this c and s. Uh, C and S are just variables to define to describe some sort of function that can be in terms of um, x, t, u, and d u d x. That's all it's saying. Okay, so let's grab our PDE from uh, the orange, which is over here, and now we just need to squeeze that into this guy. Well, we can move the alpha over to the left-hand side and get 1 over alpha dt uh, d log case t equals r to the negative 2. That's the same thing as 1 over r squared times d dr r squared dt dr plus zero. Okay, so our one over alpha, that becomes our c. Um, the r to the negative two, that's the same as x to the negative m. Our r squared, the same as x to the m. Our zero, I put that just as a placeholder for s. Our zero is our s. And a really imp important distinction to make is that t is represented by u, okay? And r will become x. MATLAB will not understand if you put in t or r. However, it will understand if you put in u. And x, okay. I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you how uh, we put this all together. Okay, we've opened up MATLAB, and we're ready to start writing our our code to describe our PDE. It would be a good idea if we called this, if we were able to go back and refer to this entire partial differential equation. So we're just going going to go ahead, and our first line of code is going to say. Everything that comes below this line is going to be referred to as a function, and that function's name is going to be PDE1. Now, you can name this uh, function Batman. I, I don't really care. What, the only thing that matters is that you're consistent. Okay, 
Now, our geometry of our system, our m, as we said on, on the slide previously, uh, is 2. And our x mesh, our x mesh, if you remember, is kind of like the distance that we care about. So we have to tell MATLAB what distance we want it to solve the equation for. To do that, we need to create a vector. And we create a vector by using the command lin space. And the first two uh, arguments in this command uh, is the, the range. So in our orange, we want the space to the space to go from the center to the surface, so that's a distance of uh, 0.5 meters. And the third command is how many increments we want in that vector. Okay. Um, you know, it's an, it's an orange. We don't have to be that accurate with our solution. If we had 20 increments from the center of the orange to the outside, that's probably more than enough to sufficiently study the temperature profile. Now you can always go back and increase those increments to get a more accurate answer. The less increments you have, the less accurate your answer is going to be. The more increments, the more time it's going to take to solve. So it's, it's a give and take. Uh, the next line of code is going to be t-span. And this is the time span that we want the temperature profile to be solved for. So just like above, we have to make a vector. And how long do we want to study this orange? Well, we want to study it for eight hours. But everything in our system, all of our numbers, are metric units. Therefore, we have to enter eight hours in terms of seconds. Okay? So we go from t equals zero to t equals eight hours. Eight hours is 28,800 seconds. <laughs> okay, how many increments do we want? If we put eight increments, we would only be able to see the time difference every hour. Um, why don't we do 32 increments so we can see the time difference every 15 minutes? You'll notice that I'm putting semicolons at the end of uh, some of the lines, but not at the end of other lines. Don't put a semicolon at the end of a function. So you'll notice I didn't put a semicolon at the end of this. Okay. Next, we can go ahead and call our PDE PE solver. So we're just going to write out solution equals PDE PE and put in the names of all of the functions. So the PDE function, the initial prediction function, the BC function. We're going to define these six functions later on in the code. Right now, we're just setting it up. And uh, last but not least in your setup, you want to write u equals solution colon hold on colon comma colon comma one okay this last line of code the u equals solution is going to be the same for any PDE that you evaluate as long as there's only one PDE. So if you're trying to evaluate a system of PDEs like together, then this would be different. For more information about this, you can always go on the website and I posted a link below where you can refer to the actual MATLAB website that discusses all this syntax in way more detail. Okay, we have three more functions we need to define. Uh, the first one we should do is the PDE function. From before, now this function is going to call needs three different variables c, f, and s. Okay, from before we've we decided that c is just one over alpha. F is d u d t. Um, but you, we can't write. Hold on. We can't write d u d t. No d u d r. Sorry. We can't write d u d r. So we have to write it in MATLAB format, MATLAB speak. And to do that, we're just going to write du, capital D, lowercase x. And we decided that s is 0. 
Now this whole syntax up here with uh, a function CFSS in brackets, that's just the way that the PDE solver has to be called. Okay, So you have to have the brackets, you have to have CF and S, and on this side, the XT, U, D, U, D, X. All that's saying is that before what's below this line of code can be execu executed, uh, the program needs to pass x, t, u, these variables, to this function for it to work. Okay. Uh, the second one is our initial condition, and we know that the orange starts off at 5 degrees Celsius, so the way we write that is u initial u0 equals 5. Pretty simple. Now I think the trickiest part of this whole bit is writing the boundary conditions. Imagine here's our orange and the way MATLAB works is that it's, it needs to know a left side and a right side. So let's just say that we define the left side as being at the center and as we go out in this direction, we go to the right side at the surface. Okay? Now we need to write a boundary conditions in terms of P left, Q left, P right, and Q right. There's another uh, formalism that MATLAB uses and it is P plus QF equals zero. So we need to find a way to fit in each of our two boundary conditions into this format. Our first boundary condition on the left side is that we have uh, no flux, so dt dx equals zero. We can rearrange this into uh, the p plus qf form just by writing zero. <laughs> plus 1 dt dx equals 0. It's saying the exact same thing, but now we know that our p on the left side is 0, and our q is 1. Okay? See that? q and p. On the right side, we have a convection boundary condition, uh, so that was dt dx equals hk t minus t infinity. We can rearrange this into the p plus qf form and what we get is hk t minus t infinity plus 1 dt dx equals 0. This whole thing becomes our P, and this becomes our Q. So we can write that in MATLAB in the code as H over K T minus T infinity, and our QR is just one. At the end of all this code, we want to have some way to see the data, so we can do that in a couple of ways. We can make a surface plot, which always looks really impressive and shiny, or we could have a just a regular plot that has different curves for each increment of time. So in our case it would be at one hour, at two hours, at three hours. Now these plots are not related to the problem at all. I just pulled them off the internet. So now that you know how to solve PDEs and how to input them in MATLAB, uh, go out there and have fun. Um, this really is applicable to so many partial differential equations and you can take this really simple example of the orange and apply it to much more complex examples where you have heat generation and different, uh, bound different more complex boundary conditions. So that's about it. Um, if you could subscribe that would be great and I'll see you next time.